Today's show is on hunting Labrador Quebec caribou. I will actually hunt with a bow and then uh, extend my season and hunt with a rifle. I got Guy and Cameron Haynes, and I go along with these two guys. My knee is shot. I'm dragging it through the tundra. I uh, see this caribou on the ridge. It's the biggest caribou I've ever seen in my life. And of course, I'm not a caribou connoisseur, but I seen some of my dad's footage. There was footage. three or four bulls there, and he yep. was stepped he up was in just, the back. He was big, big. And I sneak up there on him, but he was too far away. He was 45 yards with a recurve. Now, if I had a wheel bull, slammed up maybe. And so I had to let him go. But I, we noticed he had really good, he had a really, really good, fronts and bezes were like 12 points on one side and 16 on the other but on his back he had one of the back scratchers had to be this long we need to do is just hold off and wait until we find a really exceptional trophy caribou the bugs are real bad black flies and so the caribou are going into the wind keeping them off themselves. I set my sights pretty high on taking a Boone and Crockett trophy caribou. So you know you see me here passing up on several bulls but uh, I will go home without taking a bull caribou if it means not finding that true trophy. You were the only guy in camp that had a tag left. Yeah. I the had morning one tag. we were le to, leave to leave for camp. Right. I'm sitting there snoring. Everybody away. else waking up. No, everybody's just sleeping snoring. away, sleeping in because we're going out that day. And I hear a rap rap and I look on on the door and, and I'm Carl. Carl, uh, skipper, skipper, they're migrating. They're migrating here. Come on. They're all around us. They're all around camp. Wake up. <laughs> Up, I'm staggering around, got my stuff on, I got my little bow, and we went up, up the river about a quarter mile, and it was a it was a, a big lookout, and down below us was the river, and these caribou were coming, and uh, they were swimming the river and coming on our side. Well, folks, we've been watching hundreds of uh, caribou come across here this morning. It got real cloudy last night, cooled off, and here they come. This is one of their major crossings here with uh, uh, Safari Nordique's camp. And uh, it's just going to be a matter of time before a good old bull comes. I put my binoculars up and I go, holy crumb, it's the one I, I couldn't get on three days earlier and that doesn't happen you don't like no, that's rare it, it you know you don't just bump into the same caribou out there's about 50 head of cows and bulls and behind is this big white monster of a bull Cameron got up with me and he's up there too and he, he was filming he was filming me and Cameron goes maybe you ought to shoot it with a rifle and I go He's, they're coming right towards us. I go, I don't have one. So our trusty buddy, Cantrell, <laughs> Mike Cantrell goes, 
Well, I got a gun and it's really on. When I left Wyoming, you could poke a Perry dog's eye out with it. Yeah. Oh, well, cool. I'll shoot, you know. It was his daughter's gun. His daughter's gun. So he gives me the gun and I got a dead rest and this, and all <laughs> these caribou, this is, all these caribou crossed the river and the big one's the last one. He come to the river, looked around, and here's what happened. This is how smart, you know, you think caribou are dumb, and maybe they are. Most of them are. But this one, he gets ready to go in there. The others had crossed over. He got ready to swim. He waded in, and looked at their body language, right. the other caribou looking up in the rocks. He said, uh, something's fishy. He turned around and backed out. Backed out and started trotting. He's the only one left on that side of the river out of 2,000 caribou. And this big sucker, he starts... He's going to a different crossing. He's going to a different crossing a quarter mile upstream. And so I shot, and the bullet landed in the river and sprayed him with water. <laughs> Splash. This is like a torpedo. Uh, yeah. And he sit there and shook He shook it off his face. And I go, oh... I am really in trouble. And that, he spun around. Well, how far was it? Oh, from here to my yards. archery target? 100 yards. <laughs> I mean, this yeah. is like, this is a slam target. dunk. I'm going. Something between 80 and 120, yeah, yeah, let's right. say. And so he shook his head and he said, I'm not even go there. I am just going away. And he, he walked up to the bank. Hey, you're far under, Mike. You're far under. Because Carl, Carl says, Skipper, you're too low, way too low. Oh. So the next one, you put the top of his antlers in the right. bottom of the scope. Right. And whoosh, hit him right in the back. Got him. You got him. You got him. And he goes, Skipper, watch out. You're going to blow his antlers off. <laughs> and he just staggered there. And the second and third shot, I, you know, I didn't. But the fourth shot, he went down. So... It's shooting way low. Yeah. Well, just shoot, shoot, uh, shoot about uh, six inches over. There you go. That's it. He's down there. Beautiful animal. Wow, folks. He is huge. He was coming over with all these others. This is a uh, uh, crossing we've been watching all morning. <laughs> And it's the last morning of our hunt, and it was unbelievable. This is quite the bull. Uh, they're talking him going maybe 400. So let's go over and take a look at him. It's quite the bull. Holy crump. Look at that, Carl. That's beautiful, isn't it? I've never seen a bull that big, ever, in pictures or anything. It's gorgeous. It's huge. You have double shovel on this thing. Oh my gosh. It's double sh it's shovel on. Oh, it must be 16, 18 inches high. <laughs> so we get this caribou, put it on a coos rack, put it on <laughs> 727 and head back to, uh, was it Ontario? No, no Montreal. 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 And we get there and, and okay, you can't bust the skull, okay, if you want to get it measured. And so we show up there at the airport at like six in the morning with this humongous, I, I mean, you can't believe, Something shrink wrap. wrapped in thing. white trunk wrap, yeah. A 450 and, shrunk wrap on a cart wheeling right. through Montreal airport. And they have a, a machine that you... X-ray. A, a, a scanner to make sure that every, you know, you scan stuff through. Well, yeah. It, could, it won't fit in the X-ray. It won't fit in the X-ray. The, it was a woman. She says, okay, we're going to cut into that. No, she said we have to unwrap it. Unwrap it. It's been three days since you killed it in the velvet, the velvet. by then. And, and it's 95 degrees in Montreal, and it, it, I don't know if it's been in a freezer said, all night or what. You don't want to unwrap that. Said, then she gets really, like, curious, like, oh, really? What's in there? And right about then, two maggots fell on the floor. <laughs> In a room of 2,000 people waiting to get on an airplane, and they start squishing across the floor. Squish, 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 squish. And she was like, I could see on her face, she's like, yeah, we don't want to unwrap that. She went and got someone above her. And they just cut 
They just cut a slit. They cut a slit of like three layers is all and wiped it. Put one of those sniffer pads in yeah, there. Oh, you're okay. good to go. Get it the hell out and of here. They, they had to take it and put it on an elevator and it goes down. And I turned to the guy and I says, it will be a miracle if this shows up in Billings, Montana like this. <laughs> Twenty-inch shovel goes from here, clear down to there. Thanks, Carl. This is unbelievable. Gross four forty-four. Yeah. When it was all said and done. After all of that, yeah. four forty-four. That was what a heck of a trip. What a gorgeous bull! I'll never, I'll never take a bull this big ever again.